Ever since I started gardening, I've been battling with sparrows. Seriously, they eat literally everything. It's actually to the point when I start seeds, I have to leave another tray on top to prevent them from eating my seedlings because that's what they're going after. So until I can get my seedlings well-established, several leaves in place, I actually need to protect against sparrow damage. Now sparrow damage, if you're not aware, looks like tiny little bite marks out of your seedlings. This will typically happen to brassicae species, so radishes and turnips in particular. Um, cabbage, if you're transplanting it out when it's really young, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, etc., and so forth, will also happen with all leafy greens, so all lettuces, and <laughs> they will do this with. And then they will also do this with peas and beans when they're particularly tender and not yet well established. It will look like bug bug bites, actually. It'll look like a bug, like a flea beetle or something's eating at your plant. It's not flea beetles, it's sparrows. So let's go over exactly how you protect against sparrow damage and how you can prevent your seedlings from getting eaten by these guys until they're established enough in a way that they're no longer causing problems. So first off, the things you don't wanna do is actually a capsaicin spray or something that has spice or kick to it like garlic spray. Now, while these work great for things like flea beetles and different forms of bug type insects, for birds, it actually makes it more tasty to them. I know this firsthand because my parrot, Ella, have you guys have seen her in several videos Videos on my indoor stuff, they love the taste of spice. Other things that can actually make this worse is nitrogen fertilizers or fertilizers that are high in nitrogen. So back off on the fertilizer for this beginning stage. Now things they say that work, that in my experience don't work the best, is actually sound makers. So wind chimes tend to work for a period of time, but then eventually lose their spice. Scarecrow type things like owls or hawks or um or like scare pros again initially are scary to them but will lose their spice over time and then another really popular one you see is like these reflector type mirror things again works for a small period of time but eventually loses its spice and that goes for pinwheels and other moving devices that tend to spare, scare off birds until they figure out that it's not moving other than spinning in one spot now what does work is barriers so the barriers actually don't have to be that extreme in my case what i'm doing because i have dogs combined with rabbits in the front yard that will just kind of get through anything um and so i'm using a netting type uh device and so my netting i set up for really cheap my husband set it up for me it's just half inch uh, pvc irrigation hose i think it's 19 dollars for 50 feet and i simply just took some uh, rebar. Um, you can also use bamboo stakes because we ran out at some point and so we started using just bamboo that we cut off and uh, making like a hoop house over top of your garden where you could use bug netting or in this case you could use sparrow netting. So this is just a um, specifically designed pest netting and it's not particularly durable it's not meant to you know keep kids out type thing or um, deer but it will keep out smaller critters like rabbits and sparrows and other bird type animals now when it comes to setting this up physically you actually want to get this set up when you initially sow the seeds and or when you're transplanting outdoors so for me personally i transplant my lettuce because lettuce needs really continuous moisture and in a drought it's actually best to start it um, in a cell because of that because of how warm and hot it is right now like it's the and it's may long right now and um it is so hot i'm just standing here doing nothing and i'm like i'm sweating because it's just so warm out right now um and so that's just not conducive to the you know seed starting particularly with seeds that are just broadcasted on the soil surface and need light to germinate so i do start them as sets so i encourage you to actually do that for yourself as well you'll see much better results so you want to get that set up right away now the other option would actually be fishing line so the invisible fishing line around 20 pound test you need it a little bit hardy because it needs to be able to make it through the whole summer with sun exposure and not snap so the thicker the better um and just literally 
a bamboo stake, bamboo stake, fishing line in between, and you're just going to pull it tight and literally place it right over top of your lettuce seedlings. And over time, you can add new layers of the uh, fishing line or simply just move the fishing line up with the lettuce. For whatever reason, that single line absolutely drives sparrows and birds insane, and they will stay away from them. Now, it's not gonna keep your dogs away, and it's not gonna keep rabbits away, but if you are strictly dealing with a bird problem, this is a great solution for you. It's inexpensive and it's very effective. So of course my camera has to like crap out on me and get too hot to have to refilm this. But what I will say, the last tip hands down is actually intercropping or companion planting. Now, what I would do personally is put really well-established plants in place that we know the birds have no interest in when it comes to foliage. So things like tomatoes, peppers, okra, flowers, whatever the case is, plant those, leave those in place for about two weeks, and then intercrop or companion plant in your lettuce, your peas, your beans, your beets, radishes, things you know, leafy green wise, the sparrows are going to go for. This works wonderfully because it's very similar to the rock trick that people will use for deterring sparrows from eating strawberries or raspberries, and it's to paint rocks red and make them look like strawberries. The birds will go try them out, find they're not edible, and then in theory won't come back and eat more. And I find it particularly, it works really well when we're using adult plants and intercropping smaller plants because I've done this in the past. It's very effective. But that's all I have for you when it comes to deterring sparrows. What are your tips and tricks for just deterring birds in general? They can be definitely a pain in the butt. So, happy gardening.